So rather, since Arvel's not here, I don't follow the native tradition. So, but I did want to give you something that was similar, and I came across a TED Talk. Everybody knows what TED Talks are? Yes. I love watching them. I hope you enjoyed it. It's a four-minute clip, and it's just amazing. When gentle and still, fight the source, eternally here, ascent and descending, air, rhythmic flow, fluid and graceful, waves of serenity, smooth streams of purity, rains replenishing rapidly. Rivers of dreams, raging springs, covering earth in abundance, universal solvent, dissolving, drink, liquid, life, and power. Water. Born when the universe was formed, warmed mankind, gave him light, colored rays illuminate, ember flickers, incandescent, powerful and brilliant, sacred son of air, father of fury, heat dancing vigorously between perfection and beauty, unconfined agility, fast and fancy, sparks of ingenuity rise, fire. thanks to our mother, the earth, who sustains us. We return thanks to the rivers and to the streams, which supply us with water. We return thanks to all herbs, which furnish medicines for the cure of our diseases. We return thanks to the corn and to her sisters, the beans and the squash, which give us life. We return thanks to the bushes and the trees which provide us with fruit. And we return thanks to the wind which moving the air has banished diseases. And we return thanks to the moon and to the stars which have given us their light when the sun was gone. And we return thanks to our grandmother, Heho, who has given us his reign, and we return thanks to the sun that he has looked upon the earth with a beneficent eye 
And lastly, we return thanks to the Great Spirit, who in whom is embodied all goodness and who directs all things for the good of his children. This is an Iroquois prayer. Thank you. <laughs> How are you today? Good. Good. Wonderful. Um, before we get into our talk today, we're going to do a meditation, if that's okay with everyone. Um, so I ask that you put your feet on the floor um, and your hands um, into prayer pose, both palms together in the center of your sternum, in front of your heart center. Take a deep inhale and exhale from the mouth with the sound ha. Ah. Ah. Again, deep inhale, exhale, ha. And one more, inhale, and exhale, ha. And we're going to sing the mantra this morning, E-A-O, spelled I-A-O, E-A-O, which translates to a few things. Isis, Apophorus, Osiris, or Iota, Alpha, and Omega, or the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. And the translation of Iao is the I is the inner divinity of each human being, the A is the bridge that connects us to the O, and the O is the divine consciousness of all that is. And so when we sing Iao, it's a mantra of transformation, it's a mantra of transmutation, taking anything that looks dark and turning it into light. So we're going to sing Iao, okay? And we'll listen for the first time, because it's held for a long time, so do the best you can. Okay, so hands in prayer at our heart center. Take an inhale. Exhale. Just listen for the first time. today, name one thing you love, what would you say? Myself. There you go. Right. And so because of that, I figured we'd continue along the path of self-love. And one of the necessary uh, evils, if you call it, uh, is forgiveness of yourself. And I call it the new F word, or the real F word. And so every time you're tempted to curse uh, anything that's happened to you that it can be perceived as negative or dark or um, heavy or burdening to us, what if we change our perception and how we view it? So that's what forgiveness is. Forgiveness for me is a change in perception of how I choose to look at something that initially caused me feelings of anger, resentment, upset, sadness, dare I say hatred, and seeing it in a different light, in a way that makes me say, well, what if it was necessary for my growth? What if the person walked into my life as a divine spirit, and I signed up for it before I got here, and that they were the thing that was coming to teach me the lesson that I signed up for, through the experience of what I perceived as negative, but maybe my lesson was forgiveness. So, if you can, internally, mentally, think of one thing that you'd like to forgive yourself for. Just for a moment. 
Or, if you've forgiven yourself for everything, one thing you'd like to forgive another human being for. And I ask at the moment, are you willing to see it in a different way? Are you willing to let go of the pain from the past and walk forward into life today, unburdened and free of the prison that we've locked ourselves in every time we, we choose to not forgive someone? <clears throat> Somebody once said that the prison door is locked from the inside, that you hold the key, that you choose to stay in it every moment of every day, that you choose fear over love, that you choose unforgiveness over forgiveness. And so, in order to love yourself, you would need to forgive yourself. Because love is forgiveness, right? And most people walk through the day doing the best that they can, right? Somebody I love always says, you only know what you know. And so, if that's true, then can we see the other person that's caused us harm as doing the best that they can? And if they're doing the best that they can, can we realize that we're doing the best that we can too each day and we're all fallible and no one's perfect and we make mistakes. And mistakes are just that, they're mistakes. They're nothing to hold ourselves accountable for for the rest of our lives. We hold ourselves prison, we lock ourselves away, and then we beat ourselves up every single day. Worse than we would ever beat another human being up, verbally or mentally. And that if you have a, um, a place in your life that you've not chosen forgiveness, and you choose to walk away from it instead, or ignore it and act like it never happened, that's still not forgiving because you're choosing to not look at it or see the truth in the situation. And so I like to say, if you don't change your mind, you can't change your life. And so can you change your mind about it? And so we did Iao, the mantra in the beginning, because it allows us to connect to the divinity of ourselves. And when we do that, then we see that we are divine and everything that we do in life is to cause a step in a forward direction not to go backwards. And so if you're holding on to anger and resentment about being betrayed or being hurt, um, then you're holding yourself back and you're not allowing yourself growth and you can't move forward. Every, every human in the world, every being in the world is what I like to call a lotus flower. Does everyone know the story of the lotus flower? The lotus flower starts as a tight, tight, tight bud under so much mud and muck. It's so deep, it's dark, it's dense, it's smelly and ugly. And its job is to find a way to grow through the mud and the muck and the heaviness in order to find the water where it gets washed clean. Then finally puts its face to the sun and with the sun, with life and love, it's allowed to blossom into its full radiance. That's us. We choose sometimes by not forgiving ourselves or other people to get stuck in the mud. We're living there now. We're staying deep down in the mud and we're choosing to not shine in this world. And if you choose to not shine in this world, then you are denying me a gift. You're denying me the gift of yourself, your true self. Do you remember, uh, probably two months ago I said, if you dim your light for anyone, right? If you dim your light for anyone, you're dimming your radiance for the world. And if somebody's not comfortable with your radiance, we should tell them to do what? Wear sunglasses. Wear sunglasses. <laughs> so maybe we should all go to the dollar store and buy a bunch and hand them out. All day. So, um, <laughs> so choosing forgiveness, even the willingness to be forgiven, right, if somebody's offering forgiveness, because it's not always easy, right, to accept forgiveness. If somebody says, I'm so sorry, we want to hold on to it sometimes, like, no, he did this to me, and we tell the story over and over and over again to anyone who will listen to our pain so that they can side with us and justify our feelings. But if you retell the story from a place of pain and anger and resentment, 
you perpetuate more pain and anger and resentment in your life. You get what you give out every single day. If you want to be forgiven for something, you need to forgive some you need to forgive someone else for something. So before I go on, we're going to uh, do a mantra where we take the pain of our past and dump it behind us and we don't look at it ever again. Is that okay? Yeah. Okay. <laughs> if, it was, if it was just that easy. So now you can walk around after you learn this all day long and go, Wahe Guru, Wahe Guru, Wahe Guru. <laughs> Anytime something comes up and triggers you, you just start doing this mantra and people will either stay away from you so then you won't get triggered anymore, which will be a bonus. And then, or you start to teach it to people and then you're spreading some love into the world. Okay? So the words are, Wahe Guru, Wahe Guru, Wahe Guru, Wahe Jiyo. Okay? Wahe Guru is that which takes me out of darkness and brings me into light. Wahe Jiyo is I am the light of the divine. I'm the living light of the divine. So when we sing Wahe Guru, I am my own teacher because the ultimate spiritual teacher lives within me. Wahe Guru, Wahe Guru, Wahe Guru, Wahe Jiyo. And I'm going to do this for a moment. And you're going to bring your arms out like this, and you go, Wahe Guru, and then with force and vigor, Wahe Guru, and then Wahe Guru, and then Wahe Jiyo. Okay? So it goes, Wahe Guru, Wahe Guru, Wahe Guru, Wahe Jiyo. We repeat that, okay? Everybody's good? Yeah. You're going to love it. It makes you feel powerful. It also, everything that doesn't allow you to be your best self, we're going to leave behind us, okay? We're only going to be radiant, and everybody's going to need sunglasses after today. Okay? <laughs> All right, so we're going to get them in. Just see yourself surrounded in light. Ready? Five, six, seven, eight. Why, good, why, good, why, good, why, Gio? Why, good, why, good, why, good, why, Gio? Why, good, why, good, why, good, why, Gio? Why, good, why, good, why, good, why? concept called radical forgiveness. Talk a little bit about that. I'm not sure if anybody's familiar with that. 
Yeah, Colin Tipping. Uh, so radical forgiveness asks just what I've been speaking about, that we see things from a different perception, um, a different perspective, that we see that everything that's happened to us in our lives is for our greatest good and for, our most, uh, for the highest spiritual growth of our soul. Um, radical forgiveness asks that we see each person that we encounter or that triggers us as a divine soul as well. And that um, the understanding would come that they've signed up for the lesson to be the bad guy in your story so that you can forgive them. They're here to teach you forgiveness. So there's a, an amazing parable by Neil Donald Walsh called the parable of the little soul and the sun. If anybody's familiar with that. And the premise of the parable is there's this little soul in the sky talking to God and he says, I want to be human. I want to go to earth. And uh, God says, why would you want to leave the light? Are you sure you want to go to earth? He says, yes, I want to learn. He said, well, you have to choose what you want to learn. And he said, I want to learn forgiveness. And God says, are you sure? He says, yes, I really want to go to earth and learn forgiveness. And God said, okay, but then somebody has to, another soul has to sign up and sacrifice their life to be the thing that you forgive. And he said, great, I'm in. And God said, are you sure? And he said, yes. And God said, well, remember that when you get to be human, you'll forget that everyone is the same light because you'll have been marred by human experience that's painful and hurtful and you will have some anger and sadness. And he said, no, I'm always going to be light. God said, that's true, you're always going to be light. But while you're human, you're also human too. <coughs> and then he asked for a volunteer and a little soul said, I'll go and I'll be the thing that's to be forgiven. And the, the soul that was sacrificing his light said, but I ask of you, when we get to earth and you're angry at me and you wanna yell at me and walk away, can you please remember who I am? And he said, I promise I will. I promise I will. And he said, I'm asking again, when you see me in earth, and I'm the one that hurt you. And he said, no, you can never hurt me. He said, I'm signing up for it. I'm coming to hurt you so that you can learn forgiveness. That's your lesson, and that's my lesson. My lesson is to be of service to the world, Yours is to find forgiveness. It's a beautiful parable. So they both get born as human, as you can tell, right? And the other soul does something horrendous, and the soul does forget for a little while until he's reminded by somebody else because he had to forgive somebody else for something. And it was like a ripple effect. And so Nanda, when she read the Daily Word today, said, our actions impact the entire web. So if you choose to not forgive, you're creating a ripple effect of non-forgiveness in the world. If you choose to forgive and take the higher road and uh, live in the light, right, and say, I choose to see this differently, then people around you, especially the person that uh, is the person that did the thing that you need to forgive, they will be touched in a way in their heart center that they'll probably ask anyway for forgiveness if you forgive them. But if we hold anger and resentment and we're mad and upset, that person walks away also angry and upset. And do we want to be that in the world? Or do we want to be light and a source of love? In order to be unconditionally loving, you have to find fault in no one, not even yourself. It's very difficult to do. Have you found fault in yourself today? 20 times since you woke up, right? I faulted myself for dropping my papers in the uh, courtyard and literally swore, and not this F word, but the other one. <laughs> um, the one that chooses to be my favorite some days. But, um, but we hold ourselves accountable and we feel guilty for so much stuff in this world that we don't have to feel guilty about. We say, how many times do you say you're sorry during the day? How many times, seriously? A lot, right? We're addicted to saying we're sorry until the time comes when we really need to be sorry. I bump into you, I'm like, oh my God, I'm so sorry. Like I knocked you over and flogged you. 
You know? like, I just bumped into it. It was a mistake. I made a mistake. We get to make mistakes. We don't have to punish ourselves for our life for making a mistake. So, the new F word, right? So we're going to forgiveness now. Do you remember, uh, I taught you that we don't ever give anybody the middle finger. Do you remember that? Okay. You know how when you want to say the F word, you give somebody the middle finger? You want to anyway. It's a habit, right? People drive around and they do that. <laughs> Not me. I don't. I actually don't. And I'm going to tell you why. All of your fingers hold power. If you want to give a finger to somebody, you give your index finger to somebody. Okay? Because this means prosperity and abundance. Oh. If you want to give a finger to somebody, you give your pinky. Because that means may you communicate better. Okay? If you want to give a finger to somebody, you give your ring finger. May you be the light in this world. Because that's the sun, never the middle finger. Because the middle finger is Saturn, it's the same as the other F word. And the middle finger of Saturn is saying, may karma, may every wrong you ever have done come back to you. Wow. I don't want that. Do you want that? No. Give me this finger all day long, please. I need abundance like you wouldn't believe. <laughs> or give me this one, because I lack uh, communication skills some days, so that's a good one too. <laughs> so we're going to work with our fingers in a little while, and that's why I say that. Um, to yourself, um, <laughs> uh, to yourself, to find forgiveness, right? So we're going to just hold our hands in a mudra for a moment, and we're going to close our eyes, and we're just going to go into a space of forgiveness for ourselves. So what you do is you bring your index finger down, and then you take your thumb, and you touch your middle and your ring finger, and you leave your pinky free, okay? This is to heal your heart, your emotional heart, okay? This is to let everything go that burdens you and makes you feel less than and makes you feel limited. And so you're going to do it on both hands. So index down, thumb to middle, sorry, and ring. And you're going to put the palms up on your lap. Okay. That's it. You've got it. Index down, thumb to middle, and ring. Bring your hands on your lap. Close your eyes. Inhale. God bless you. Exhale. Inhale again. Exhale. God bless you. Internally say to yourself, I set myself free. I am no longer a prisoner to myself or this world. I love myself completely and unconditionally. I set myself free. I know who I am in truth. I know what I am in truth. I know how I serve in truth. I am free. I am free. I am free. Inhale. Exhale. And then bring your hands up next to your shoulders, palms out. We're going to do our next mantra, which allows us to heal the relationship we have with ourselves. So after we've just forgiven ourselves, we're going to heal our relationship with ourselves. So the words are sa ta na ma ra ma da sa sa se so hung. My head's in the way, isn't it? <laughs> Okay, Satanama, Ramadasa, Sase Soham. From my death I am reborn. I am the sun, the moon, the earth, and the universe. I am divine. I am divine. And so we're going to touch our thumb to each finger. We're going to bring balance into all of these fingers and all this energy. And so we're going to go index finger first. Sa ta na. Ma. And repeat, Ra, Ma, 
da sa. Repeat. Sa se so hum. And then we're gonna inhale four times. Everybody got it? Alright. Jazzy. So hands up next to the shoulders. It's a little faster than what we practiced, but I have faith. Ready? Five, six, seven. Sa, ha, na, ha, ra, ha, da, sa, sa, se, so, ha. Sa, ha, na, ha, ra, ha, da, sa, sa, se, so, ha. So we take a deep inhale. Hold the breath. Exhale. Inhale, reach up to the ceiling. And when we exhale, we're gonna bust out laughing again. Shake the hands. <laughs> exhale. <laughs> oh no, come on. <laughs> we gotta do it again. That was, even I was bad at it. Alright, inhale up. Ready, exhale. <laughs> Alright, now we've got it. Everybody good? Okay, one other way, um, sorry, one other way <clears throat> to choose forgiveness is the ha'ono pono ono. Yes, everybody knows that meditation? Yes. I'm sorry, please forgive me, thank you, and I love you. You say it throughout the day for yourself or for another human being. I'm sorry, please forgive me, thank you, and I love you. And so you can say it internally, because the beauty about forgiveness is that you don't have to have the other person's permission to be forgiven. You have to have your own permission to be forgiven. Most times, the person doesn't even remember that they've done something to you. I went to a high school reunion um, about 15 years after I graduated, and I walked into the room, I hadn't seen anybody in a very long time, and this girl came straight up to me. I mean, we're 35 years old at this point. And she said, I'm so sorry for the way I treated you. And I went, I don't have no idea what you're talking about. And she said, oh, I was horrible to you in high school. And I went, okay. And I walked away because I don't remember. <laughs> but she remembers being horrific to me. And then somebody else reminded me of the horrific things that she used to say about me. And I thought, well, I didn't know, so it didn't matter to me. But she had carried it around for 15 years. Who knew if she was ever going to see me again? But she couldn't even forgive herself for doing something that an 18-year-old would do in high school, right? We're petty when we're in high school. We say things to people because we're uncomfortable with their differences and we're uncomfortable with their quirks and they remind us of ourselves and we're not comfortable with that part of ourself either. So you're just my mirror and so I'm gonna blame you instead of looking at myself. That's what happens all day long. We aren't forgiving people for things that we're actually doing. How messed up is that? <laughs> I mean, if you have to forgive someone, ask yourself first question when you go, I don't want to forgive them, that was awful, I can't believe they did that to me. Can you ask yourself, what have I done lately that needs to be forgiven? Are you perfect? Are any of us perfect? Yes, we're perfectly imperfect. We all have flaws. The flaws aren't really flaws. It's not even a great word to use. Flaw, eh. quirks, yes. Kookiness, that's a good one. Idiosyncrasy, I like that one too. My creativity, my dad used to call me artsy. Um, with quotations, artsy, air quotations, which was always like, I'm not sure if that's good or bad, but I'm going to take it as a good thing, yeah, because he loves me and he would never say anything that would hurt me, but I was artsy. It was his way of saying I was different. Um, and so when we look in the mirror, I taught you the exercise, get up in the morning, go to the mirror, look at yourself, makeup down the face, teeth not brushed, hair up to here, and go, I love you completely and unconditionally, with a smile on your face, faking it till you make it. Can you say it to another person? Can you turn to the person next to you and say, I love you completely and unconditionally and mean it? Go ahead. I love you. I love you. Unconditionally. <laughs> <laughs> 
Now internally say to yourself, again, I completely love myself unconditionally and I mean it. I love myself from head to toe. I love the freckles on my face, my knobby knees. Right. I didn't like my knees for about 20 years of my life. I'm not really sure why, there's nothing wrong with them. Um, <laughs> I love my hair. Right? Every aspect of yourself. So, <clears throat> uh, my train of thought just went like this, as it does every time. I was like, squirrel, something shiny over there. <laughs> <laughs> it was Bob. He was shining a little too bright right now. So it, was um, <laughs> it really did just go right away. It's okay. I'm all right with it. Forgive yourself. We forgive you. <laughs> Me, myself? Is that? Oh. <laughs> oh, and the student becomes the teacher. Um, I do forgive myself. I am sorry. Please forgive me. Thank you, and I love you. Right. All right. <laughs> Thank you, Michael. Right? Is that right? Okay. So, the last thing I want to talk about is the perception of something is either good or bad, mm. right? Um, we perceive an experience as good or bad, as positive or negative, but what if it was just an experience? What if there was no adjective attached to it? Is the thing that the person did to you bad? Our perception tells us it is, but can it just be something that we had to experience? Can I take that out of it so that I don't see the person as bad. Because what happens is you see the experience as bad, so then you see the person as bad. And I don't see anyone as bad. I don't see them as evil. Uh, I try not to see anyone as a negative entity. I do see everyone as light. What I know is that everyone falls every day. And that when I get hurt or I feel wounded, that it's a signal that I need to look internally within myself and find the space that is unhealed in me so that I don't get triggered again. And so the ultimate form of forgiveness is being able to say thank you to the person for the experience. And so what if you saw a person, like I, I'll use my, I'm always gonna use my life as my example. <clears throat> what if the first person that ever dumped me, right, who told me I was an odd beauty, I don't know what that means to this day, and that I was too much. <laughs> no, I don't. Um, and I got very, very hurt. And I remember crying in my room. I was 18. Crying in my room for days and days. And my mother buying me a card and flowers and heartbroken, right? But I have to tell you that if I saw that person today, I would thank them. Because hindsight's 2020. He did me a favor. Because from that, my mother told me, never dim your light for anyone. Always be yourself. If they don't like you for who they are, that's their problem and their loss. And so my mother's harsh, so she's also like, you're gone now. And so I'm not that way. However, she does believe that everybody gets to be their truest form of divinity when they walk around this earth. So, and Think about that. If you ran into somebody that hurt you, or you perceived as hurting you, at this point in your life, could you say thank you? Did you get the lesson? If you can't say thank you, I can guarantee that the lesson will come up again in your lifetime. Because the universe is going to give you everything you can possibly need to grow to be your truest expression of the divine, to be the brightest light that you can. It's always conspiring for your highest good, even though it looks heavy sometimes and dark. It's always for your highest good. What if the path that led you down the road to meet the person that did something horrific to you, what if that path is the right path? What if it's not the bad path? 
we like to say, oh, if I just knew, I wouldn't have chose, I wouldn't have dated, I wouldn't have that person. But what if that's what it was meant to be? Because you needed to learn it at that point in time. What if the other path that you chose led to more heartbreak and more upset and more pain? What if this path was the one of least resistance? The founder of Nam Yoga always says, be grateful for every headache that comes into your life because it's the solution for the bigger headache that might be on the way. Wow. <laughs> if you can find the lesson in the headache right now, you'll remember the lesson when the big one comes. Right? Find the lesson in every headache, in every challenge, in every problem. There's a lesson in all of it. Every single moment of every day is an opportunity to grow and be better. We're only trying to be better every day. Don't try to be perfect. You'll beat yourself up from the moment you wake up to the time you go to bed. Say to yourself, I choose to be better today than I was yesterday. You automatically forgive yourself for yesterday if you just say, I choose to be better today. I'm going to do, I'm going to do my best. That's all I can do. That's all we can do. Do you know that? We can only do our best. You can't do anything more. If you hold yourself to a standard way up here, you're never going to meet it. It's, it's impossible. It's like making a to-do list of 30 things. I've got two hours. I'm going to do it. <laughs> 30 things. You get three down, two hours are gone, and you're like, I suck. I didn't get anything done. I was lazy. I got distracted. You found fault in yourself, but you set such a lofty goal that what if every day you just set one thing to do? One goal. Today I, I set one goal. Ooh, okay, great. Tomorrow, maybe I can set two. I don't know. And every day you start a little bit more. Or maybe you take a week and you only do one thing every day for a week. Maybe today you forgive yourself for one thing. Maybe tomorrow you forgive yourself for the same thing. And seven days in a row you forgive yourself for the same exact thing. Until it holds no trigger anymore. Until it, it yields no emotional response. Can you do that? When you have no response, it means it's healed. You're like, ah, that doesn't even bother me anymore. Fantastic. Next. So we go about our day always trying to find the lesson and always saying to ourselves, I'm just going to do better in the next moment. Today I forgive myself for the same exact thing. So, again, see, you have to stop. Bob. No, I don't want you to close your mouth. I love your shiny teeth. Don't close your mouth. Say you're sorry to yourself. There you go. All right, so I'm going to end because my train of thought is like, there's squirrels everywhere in the room. And so, yeah. Thank you. How's that? Thank you. You help me. Um, okay, so. This is really good, actually. I'm going to go off on a little tangent here. Bob is doing his job at the moment. Bob is shining, right? He's sitting in the corner, literally shining. I keep getting distracted by him. But there's no blame or fault in it. He's doing his job. Because his job is to teach me patience with myself and forgiveness for not remembering everything that I thought I memorized this morning. <laughs> even though there are 20 pages up here. I haven't, I haven't looked. But, um, <laughs> and so thank you, right? Thank you. So it was Easter uh, last time I was here, around the last time I was here. And Easter is what we consider a time of resurrection, right? And so that's how I think of forgiveness. Forgiveness is allowing ourselves to have a resurrection, to be reborn into the light, to be our highest selves, to rise, Right, to rise as high as we can, to plant new seeds so that beautiful flowers grow. And so can you take all of the pain and the disappointment and the betrayal and the anger and the insult, and can you see it as fertilizer? You're about to plant a community garden, right? Okay, whoever's going to plant the community garden, every time you put your hands in the dirt, plant anger. And I'm going to tell you why. Upset, guilt, shame, resentment, and allow those lessons and the wisdom that has come to you in this lifetime to be the fertilizer for the flowers of love, 
and to compassion and understanding and forgiveness. Because without those things, we can't learn those things. Without going through hurt and betrayal, I cannot learn how to unconditionally love and forgive someone. You can't, because you have no experience of it. It's like the, the star, right, the soul. It had no experience of anything other than light. And in order to know its own light, it had to be darkness to remember its light. That's all that's happening here, is you're trying to remember your light. You're trying to remember that you are part of everything that's good in this universe. There's nothing wrong with you. You aren't bad. You aren't limited. You're beautiful and intelligent and amazing and radiant. And you are pure love. It's as simple as it gets. So, everybody good? I'm sorry. <laughs> Repeat after me. I'm sorry. Please forgive me. Thank you. I love you. So now that we've forgiven ourselves of everything, right? We're free and clear. We're going to do a mantra that implements that change and makes it part of us now. And so the words are. Om Satyam Param Dimahi. Om Satyam Param Dimahi. So um, it was explained to me once when I was given this mantra that if you don't want to change, don't sing it. It causes change immediately, and it what it does is it lifts the veil from the eyes so that your perception is only of love. It makes everything else fall away. Om Satyam. Om Satyam is I am the truth. Param Di Mahi. And that gift is a gift I give myself. Om Satyam. Param Di Mahi. Is it okay if we sing that? Yeah. Okay. So, Om Satyam. You're going to put your hands open. Just palms up to the sky. And we're going to sing Om Satyam. And we'll listen for a moment. And ask for everything you need. Om Satyam. We'll just listen one more time. Om Satyam Parandimahi. Inhale. Om Satyam Parandimahi. Om Satyam Parandimahi. Om Satyam Parandimahi. Om Satyam. today, I just don't know what's wrong with you. All right, and everybody. The light of love surrounds me. I am the light of love. The presence of love enfolds me. I am the presence of love. The power of love protects me. I am the power of love. Wherever I am, love is. 